talking to EUA, American Disadvantage and they are the global physician. For example, if you are studying in India, you will be only practicing in India. If you're going to come to EUA, you are the global physician. That means you're practicing in US 50 states, Canada, UK, and if you want to come back to India, uh, a medical council of India is appropriate so they can come back and practice in uh, India also. So you are not only limited to India, you are ready to practice anywhere in the world. You, you look at the, the background there and you, you tell that's the that's the facility which we have in Antigua. It's such a, a magnificent um, place to be. And that's also on one of the three sixty five beaches. Can you imagine uh, studying in paradise and you could just sip out of your room onto the beach and one of the best beaches that you can find on earth. It's not often that you find places as comfortable as that. So, you know, we are, you know, so it's my invitation to this. <laughs> it is, you know, it's um, the, the, the Manipal group, educational group, and its medical um, side of things and what she's trying to achieve. And that's why we have maybe Manti here who can express, give you a little bit more uh, of an idea of how things can be done if you are looking to, to, to send your, your kids to, to that, that part of the world how it can be done. Back to us in a very big way and it goes to show you the cycle of the sport that um, we do not remain one place forever. If um, India, I think, uh, because of its improvement, uh, the IPL would have helped in a big way. Uh, the money is made in India. The people that goes to matches in India would have been of great help. So it was given Indian cricket, in my opinion, the substance that it needs to be where it's at now. They, they, they are a very good team. It's the team to beat. And even though it's the team to beat, India still got to, some work to do by winning overseas on a much regular basis, like Australia and England. They're done in the West Indies quite easily, but there are still some uh, some grounds to cover, <coughs> and you're still you're making that improvement to do so. So 2019 World Cup is coming. So in your view or in your observation, which team has the most potentiality to win the World Cup 2019? I've always felt England, with with its uh, all-round ability, it's um it's uh going to be played in their country, and I've always felt that they had a team that was well balanced, but for some reason, they always fall short. We saw that in uh, the Champions Trophy in England, Pakistan, a team which I, uh, I do some mentoring as well, and the enormous talent in these teams, the Pakistans, you can never ever count um, Australia out, never ever count um, England out, never count um, India for, for, for that matter. There's uh, four or five teams who have got uh, the ability to win it on the day if everything clicks. And what about West Indies? I'm hoping we get lucky. But uh, there's lots of talent there. Um, our form haven't really shown, shown us at present, if that's fair to say. But um, never ever count because of that talent. Sorry, in the name. Any New Year resolution 2019 is coming? Oh, it's to see my West Indies team back to the top. <laughs> to see my West Indies team back to the top. Um, having, um, having played and seen us uh, beaten in Bangladesh, oh, it hurts. Uh, beaten in two and three, two and three days, it's tough. But um, hoping to see us back where we, 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 we belong because we've been waiting too long now. And I believe that uh, the time is basically right for us to start, start showing some changes. And if my resolution is going to be anything for 2019, I'm hoping that we get better. Sir, was there any bowler who really troubled you? Yeah, man, there's a whole lot of bowlers who, uh, who um, did trouble you. Any, any, any bowler who has six balls to deliver, <laughs> he has, uh, he has uh, an unfair advantage in my opinion. Because you only got one time, you're going to get out. Yeah. And he has six deliveries, so 
Uh, but when he first came to India, uh, the top, it wasn't about maybe the pace attack which you have now. In 1974, it was about the four best spinners in the world. Uh, Pishan Singh Bedi, you had Irapali Prasanna, you had Shandu Shekhar, and Ben Kataragava. You know, they were just as frightening as maybe uh, a fast bowler. So, things have changed a bit now. One of our good friends is now the Prime Minister of Pakistan. So do you have any chance to come in politics? Politics? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be tough, you know. It's, uh, uh, in politics, um, whenever you win and you would have done well, I guess, um, there's always a honeymoon period. <laughs> and when that honey honeymoon runs out, you're back to square one. <laughs> and uh, because of those reasons, politics has always been a very... Um, Particular subject for me. It's always been very, um, you're not quite sure to what's going to happen next because people are so hard to please. <coughs> and uh, to please everyone, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough task. Um, I do not envy uh, Imran at all for being in that position. <laughs> <laughs> I do not envy him at all. How would you wrap your first century? 192 not up against India. As um, lucky. How? Why I said lucky? Because the guy who got me out uh, in a couple of the matches, in the, the first test match that we played in Bangalore, was Shandu Shekhar. And apparently, uh, thank God that he, he missed the second test match through injury, and I prevailed. So I thank him. <laughs> Anybody? It depends, so long as you do not get too personal. Um, nothing is wrong with trying to, to get a guy to, um, to do things which he doesn't do normally. And uh, I think Virat likes, um, the more said, the more you can compete. And I think Virat, for some reason, uh, is a competitor, he's good. You're only good if you can reply. You know, if you're not good, you won't reply. So uh, I think um, Virat is good enough that you can stand up and be counted. You're going to have your bad days, but you'll have more good days than bad days. And sir, do you feel cricket loss now gives more protection to the batsman? Sorry? Cricket loss gives more protection to the batsman nowadays. Not really. No, no, I don't think so. Um, I think it's... Um, what, what, what I do not like uh, to see is that... Um, and I think it can get better over the years that... Uh, because of the, the revolutionized... revolutionization of the bats itself, that uh, the boundaries sometimes are a little small. And to me, you look at the test match played in Australia, those are huge boundaries. How many sixes have you seen here so far? You know, so that gives you an indication that it's a proper cricket ground. And I think bowlers should re be respected having decent enough boundaries for them to perform. Sir, you never wear a helmet in whole career. I was just mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a nutcase with that, just, uh, just mad. Um, now I look back at it. Now I look back at it and I'm saying, you got to be crazy. <laughs> I look back and say, you're crazy, man. You and know? it seems that you uh, used to chew, chew gums. Chewing gum. Chewing gum. Chewing gum. Mm, no, only when playing. Uh, only when really. playing. But um, chewing gum those days was my companion. <laughs> you know, and funny enough, uh, I think if I, if I was playing today, I'll get my agent to go and find me uh, a chewing gum contract. <laughs> <laughs> I never had one then. So I missed out big time. <laughs> Sir, your prediction on ongoing cricket tests between India and Australia? I, I still believe that in, uh, India is in a good place for them to win their first series away from home in Australia. I believe that um, you're going to get a better chance than this. And you should utilize these opportunities as best as you can. Uh, when you have them, you've got to take them. And I think India, they are in a very good place now in order to do so. Under the right leadership, in my opinion aggressive Kohli and I know it won't be because of uh, Kohli is not wanting to. I think you've got the right guy with the right energy who can accomplish that. It 
looks like that you are a big fan of Rolling. Very much so. That it sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah, I am. I love to see um, good batsmen, good aggression, guys who fight, and especially the Australians who at times can be very too much of this, you know, and less of that, you know. So having um, someone like that, I, I would endorse one hundred percent. If I came, if I came tomorrow, I'd be doing the same thing. So Virat, to me, can you imagine having Virat and Viv in the same team? Huh? Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so among uh, Botham, Imran, Kapil and uh, Richard Lee, who is the best? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> they were all good. They all done their bits for their country. Kapil did his best. They were the four best all-rounders at the time. But to, to, because it's pretty tough for you to compare which is best. You've got to see what they would have achieved for their countries. And they all, at some point, would have done very well. And I leave it at that. I think it's fair. It's reasonably fair on their behalf. Because um, when you start saying this is better than that, you guys will run with it, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> so about your first captain, Super Cat uh, Clive Light? Oh, Clive was um, a real father figure to us. When we came to India for the very first time in 1974, Clive was the the force that we all looked up to. Uh, he was the godfather to us. He, he did good, good for us as a, as, a, as, a, as a person. He represented us as a, as, a, as a nation. And I was just happy to try and follow in his footsteps because what he did, uh, it's like there was a trail for me to follow. And Clive Lloyd, that was a, the perfect trail in order for anyone following Clive Lloyd to follow. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Wishes, uh, and because of the love that um, when we arrived, one felt that um, it continues. Uh, very special, very special people. Some of the nicest people that, that I would have encountered. We, we went for a little drive last night and saw some of the most magnificent views on earth. And uh, this is why we, I, I said earlier that we do have something in common that um, we have beautiful places that we can go to and enjoy. And just to be here in this part of the world, Assam itself, I'm gonna take some tea back home to, to my friends, let them know that um, you'll be drinking the best tea on earth. And just letting them know that um, the, the, the special things that uh, you have here, um, the weather, you couldn't ask for Breathing in is just uh, just very special, uh, and as I said, coming from other parts of India and then coming here, it was just totally different. The, the, the weather, the conditions, and in the nights, the, the coolness of the breeze. Uh, wow, it's um, it could be slightly compared to where I live at home. You know, um, as I said, we do have something in common, and I do appreciate seeing beautiful places and uh, coming here. Uh, it's special also. Sir, you played World Cup football also. Do you follow Just qualifying matches, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love my soccer, I love my football. Yeah. Yeah. Do you and um, Josh, who is here with me, um, <laughs> we, uh, we are Liverpool supporters. Sir, there was an episode uh, when you played for Somerset. You played for Somerset, there was an episode, sir. Some baller came to you and slays you. Sir, was that true? Well, every now and again you get some bowlers who can be naughty and say things that sometimes um, and I can remember myself and Ian Botham. Yeah. So Ian Botham, we we went out one night and we we, we, we did some things that we weren't supposed to do as sportsmen. We had one drink too many and apparently uh I was to play the next day. Didn't feel all that well. Went out and played against a team called the Morgan. And there was a fast bowler at the time who felt maybe because of what we had that night before, one drink too many, decided that he was going to take me on. And he bowled like three deliveries. And because of the night which we had, I did not see any. I missed the leg. I missed everything. Yeah. And maybe because, and then he got a little cheeky, he said things to this effect that um, he said, hey Viv, 
the ball is telling me now of what I'm receiving. The ball is whatever ounces. And that's the sort of stuff, if you're a competitor, that you need to hear. And the ground which he played on at, in Taunton was a very small ground. And to the back of the ground, there's a river that runs. And every now and again, you'll get some folks doing some casual fishing. And the next ball he bowled, because maybe he felt the tree that I did not see, he came a little straighter. And I hit it with my eyes closed. And it went over the stand and dropped in the river. And it dropped in this little dinghy where these guys were fishing. And it almost knocked the boat over. Then everyone is looking over the stand, asking the guys to throw the ball back. And the guys are saying, no, I'm not throwing the ball back. This is the first catch we would have had all day. Oh. <laughs> Finally, the ball came back. And the bowler, who apparently bowled that delivery, didn't want to see me look me in the eyes now. And as a competitor, I ran back to him, the bowler, and said, hey, Greg, seeing you know what color, shape, and size of the ball, go and help them find it. And that was the end of the day. Uh, I can remember after that, he was totally demolished. He scored 130 in about uh, 50 balls. And that was it, all, come, all done. So uh, you've got to be careful at times what you say. Uh, so, what is your greatest achievement as a cricket cricketer? Becoming um, a national hero because of my cricket at home. Uh, having a stadium named after you. It, it is. Um, it's not often you get things like that. You get a stadium that's named after you. And so, um, becoming maybe the island which we live, one of the five national heroes. So. Um, those things, and it, 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 you wouldn't have achieved these things if it wasn't maybe for, for my cricket, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. So that to me, uh, it's a sort of achievement that maybe younger folks can look to achieve that in sports also, you can accomplish a lot.